All right, Nurses on Fire, we are back with a special guest, Emlyn Miles Mattingly. Hey, Emlyn. How you doing, Simon? How you doing? Good. So it is Juneteenth while we are recording this, and I wanted to give you guys a little bit of flavor on our CFP episode. And in this episode, we are going to talk about three things that we can do to affect change in our community. And I couldn't have thought of a better person to bring on than Emlyn. <laughs> to I'm, talk I'm, about I'm, this yes so i'm flattered, I'm flattered. <laughs> so let's get right into it people you know times are crazy right now um it's not nothing new for us but because the conversations are being brought up on a global scale and a lot of our issues are being um kind of just broadcast and in ways that bring up just discussions in our community about how we could um, build as a community so that we can affect change so that this doesn't continue to happen again and again and again. <laughs> um, you know, so people are reaching out and seeing what things that they can change directly because you know, change is gonna start from the inside out. It's gonna start from you. What can we do individually? to try to strengthen our communities. So we're going to cover um, three different things directly that you can do and um, just share our thoughts around, you know, the strength that we have as a community. So, all right. So what are we going to do first? We're going to talk about, um, what's the first thing we do, Emily? I think the, the first thing we got to do is, is support Black business. Like, mm -hmm. like I always tell people this and, and I always say it like this. I was like, if you're looking for help, it ain't coming. We got to go get our own. Like, it's not going to be gonna looking. It ain't going to be no, and, and no pun intended with this, but it's not going to be a, a white horse coming over the mountain to come help us. Okay. So what we got to do is, it's very important that we make sure that we support our black businesses. How do you support a black business? You know, I think one of the ways that we do it is by working together, one another, you know, us working together. Mm -hmm. You have your platform, which you've put me on and I appreciate that. And you've always helped me with things that I had trying to do in my own business. That's one way that that peer to peer stuff. Uh, the other way is by referring black business. I was looking at my website and I needed to redo it. So when it came time for me to do a re website, I had all these other companies that I was looking at, but I found a sister that did websites right in the Bay area. So Im immediately I started to work with her. She did a great job. I talked to her and then from her, I referred two other black financial advisors to work with her. So now we're working with her. Um, and I think that's so important that we begin to build those relationships with one another. Um, I have a black CPA that I work with. Uh, so she's another person that if I have someone, I refer my clients to her. Uh, I know she's going to need the business. I know she does a great job. She has the credentials. She, she's a C CPA mm -hmm. she's working on her doctorate, you know, so I want to make sure that I am helping her any way that I can and not helping her because she's and, and, and when I say that, I'm always careful about that because sometimes people think because it's black, it's not as good. Hey. <laughs> You know, and, and and I'm like, and that's from our own, right? Like that's from our own. Like we're like, oh well, I'm not messing with them because of this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, no, that's that's not the case. She is good. The people that I'm talking about are are very, very good at what they do. Mm -hmm. And that is how I think one of the biggest things that we can do for each other is 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 lift each other up, and 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 support one another like that. Like because there's nothing, you know, that that's that's one of the things that I like to to think about. Um, what, what would you, I mean, do you have any examples of anything like that? Well, yeah, I like, well, I, first thing I want to say is there's no shortage, shortage of excellence in the black community. It's just harder to find because, um, you know, right now things are driven by SEO, search engine optimization. And so we don't have as easily, like we used to have like the green books back in the day where you just had a book and you know what businesses to go to. It's kind of a little bit drowned out unless you're connected into networks. And so that's why it's super important that you get referrals from other people. But it's also super important um, that you do connect and use whatever influence you have to help the next person. And that's what I try to do. I mean, I don't have like a huge influence, but whatever kind of influence I have or whatever um, 
kind of resources I have, I always try to share with, you know, my brothers and sisters out there who are doing things because I want them to get in front of people because like I said, there's no shortage, but it's so hard to find. People don't know it's out there unless it's in front of their faces. And so to continuously put those different people in front of people's faces, not only to say that, okay, this is a person that you can work with, but it also opens up people's eyes to what's possible because they're like, oh, for real? Like, I didn't even know there's like these black CPAs. I didn't even know there is these um, black financial advisors I can work with. And now that I know that, you know, I'll be more comfortable working with them because I already had an episode talking about this is that you can relate to issues that I'm going through more than, you know, say your X, Y, (laughs) Z planner out there because they don't necessarily know the struggle. So, um, so speaking of, you know, advisors and stuff, the next thing that we were going to highlight anyway is, um, this network of black and Latinx advisors. What is it called? It's called CHIP. So CHIP stands for changing how individuals prosper. And um, it's a a Dana, uh, I'm sorry, Dana Wilson uh, and a few other people started this group a while and just not that long ago. So this is all fresh stuff. And it's incredible because it is for black and brown people to go find financial professionals that they can work with. And, and, And let me say this about working with a black or brown financial professional. If you have had the chance to work with a black or brown financial professional or they've made it in their industry, respective, you know, respective industry, whatever one it is, understand that as a black or brown person, you know, all of the obstacles that that person had to deal with to get to where they were at. And if they made it through all those obstacles, were able to build a business, be successful, produce revenue and help people you probably are talking to someone that is very, very good at what they did because they didn't only have to overcome the obstacles outside of the industry that they got into, but let's jump into the industry that they're in. They had to overcome those same obstacles again, being the limited number of people of color in the financial services industry, the limited number of people of color that are engineers, that are architects, that are you know lawyers. So if you have one of those people of color, black or brown people in a position where they have started their own business, you need to support them. And you're probably going to get some of the best uh, solutions that you've ever had because they've had to do this in spite of being the person of color. Like they're not the person that someone's running to go look at. They're always going to be, you know, people have always kind of tucked us away and not given us the opportunities. And so we have to count on our own because once again, help ain't coming. Exactly. And that that's the perfect example of excellence. And we all know, um, you know, the tax that we pay that we have to be three, four times better than the next person to be seen as equal. And so if you can understand the struggle that somebody who has to get licensed and go through all those other things, and not to mention the like serious barriers to entry of being a successful business person and they have overcome that and they have a successful business, then that means that you are really dealing with excellence. And so, yeah, I love that you brought that up because it it is so real. It is so real. But at the same time, there is a lot of pushback within our own communities and, you know, for (laughs) factors that we were not going to get into today, but, you know, I, I, just being able to flip that script and that mindset and understanding that, you know, you know what you've got had to go through to be successful in whatever industry you're in, and especially like nurses, you know, there's not a lot of black nurses, you know, it's, yeah. there's a lot of barriers that we have to overcome just to make it out of nursing school. Oh my God, I can't even tell you the trauma that I experienced trying to go through nursing school. And this is after I already had a master's degree. So, you know, um, we can all understand it from an individual perspective and just apply that, like apply that thinking to when you're working with a a professional in the financial industry space, because they are probably the cream of the crop. So I will go on and I'll I'll add to that too. Just one real quick thing. It is Juneteenth. Yes. And we know what Juneteenth is for. Yes. And what I'll say is we've seen a massive overrepresentation of black people in a negative light in the news. Anytime you see us in the news, especially black men, they're parading us out. 
you know, 13% of the population, 40% of the pr prison population, that's three times the population is in prison. We have more people in prison right now than we had the entire time of slavery. And, and what I'm saying is these are the images that are paraded out in front of black people. Never mind what, what who's doing it or any of that. And we know that, you know, we know the, the people that control the media are the ones that are doing that. But these images that you see of black people in custody, always hurting, um, in despair, it's not a lot of, we don't see a lot of images of us being excellent. It's always the opposite way. So on this day of Juneteenth, when we have, you know, the, the, the abolition of slavery, when this happened, we want to be able to understand that we can't be victims of the narrative that the media is trying to portray us as. And that is one of the major reasons why we don't do business with black, black owned businesses, because we look at the media and anytime they see us, they show us where they show us in a negative light. So regardless of what you may think, it does impact even the black mind of how we think of each other. And that is, that's, that's real as it can get because yeah. you see it all the time. And that imagery is powerful in a negative way. Yep. Yep. So I just wanted to drop that in a little <laughs> Juneteenth nugget. A little Juneteenth nugget. And let me give you a little Juneteenth nugget, nugget too. So if you don't know what Juneteenth is, Juneteenth is a holiday celebrated traditionally on June 19th, which is the day that we are recording this. And it celebrates the liberation of those who have been held as slaves in the United States and originated in Texas because, you know, even though slaves were freed way before <laughs> this, Texas somehow didn't get the message. And so those slaves were liberated on June 10th in 1865. Exactly. <laughs> So that's what Juneteenth is about. But yeah, um, and kudos to those businesses out there recognizing it as a holiday. Um, <laughs> finally, I don't know what's taking so long. but That it yeah. should be a federal holiday, but I know that um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's crazy to see that, that, it's, that it's like that. Yeah. So speaking of like mass incarcerations and... Um, what we can do to impact change. Let's talk about how our dollars are invested in ways that, you know, we can um, really start hitting people in the pockets. Mm -hmm. um, because of course, you know, like that's the greatest way to affect change. Either you're going to be taking from someone or you're going to be putting money in somebody's pocket. So yep. how can we more, um, responsibly invest so that we're not investing in institutions that fund things like mass incarceration? Yes. Great question. So when it comes to this, this is, this is where the start, we can start with ESG and a lot of people might not know what ESG is, but ESG is environmental. It stands uh, for environmental, social, and governance. So what happens with these companies is they will do, uh, when you're investing into a company, uh, if it's an ESG fund, they will do some background research on the underlying companies that are supported in the mutual fund that you may be investing in. What that means to you is you may be investing in a company that is furthering the mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? So you have fund XYZ and funds XYZ is made up of these, you know, it tells you the percentages of the companies that they that they uh, that it's invested in, and some of those underlying companies are companies that are supplying things to the prisons that have our black men and black women in, that are continuing to fund the things that are putting us in prison, unbeknownst to you. So what happens is this ESG investing come started you know years ago, and they started to look at companies that you know that were big in fossil fuels you know oil that were uh, not environmentally safe they looked at the board of the companies and if the board of the company didn't have enough people of color on the board then they came out of the list so it does do a lot of different things and this will give you a better chance to impact where your dollars go and the companies they support now what we also want to think about is if it's something small, because I know people are going to listen to this and say, I only do, you know, $100 a month into a mutual fund. I only do $200 a month in a mutual fund. Well, let's, let's multiply that out a little bit. If there's a thousand people that are doing that, 
how much money is that? Mm -hmm. If there's 10,000 people that are doing that, how much money is that? If there's 100,000 people putting $100 into a month, how much money are we impacting into something that's negatively affecting our community without even knowing it? So I, I think it's really important for anybody that's already investing or anybody that wants to invest to make sure where this money is going. And it sounds like, man, you can do that. Absolutely. Work with a black, work with a professional that can tell you and direct you where to invest your money. That's not going to continue the negative impact on our community. Yes. It's all about that collective and, um, talking about working with um, professionals in this industry, I know that there's a lot of barriers to entry with working with a financial professional. Like you have to have a um, minimum amount of funds to invest, which is usually in the couple hundreds of thousands of dollars. But what's phenomenal about Imlin is that <laughs> he does not have such a barrier to work with him. And so um, you have to seek out people who are, have a vested interest in serving you and your communities because if you go to your local bank to try to invest or you go to a big company like you try to walk into a Merrill Lynch or something, chances are they're not even going to look at you. They're not even going to talk to you because you don't have the minimum amount of funds that would make it worth their while to invest. And so, yeah. You might not have a lot, but collectively we have a lot of power. And speaking of our collective power, we have a lot of collective power to affect change in elected officials. So let's let's dive into that. <laughs> Talk more about that. Yeah. Yes. So when we think about incarceration, when we think about um, the the prison system and just the just the entire government system, right? We have some elections that are probably more important than we uh, we realize. And that's going to be your local election. And so we're not trying to get political, but we're trying to get political. So when it, well, let, let's take a look at this. So when you have a DA, you have the district attorney, who is an elected official. You have the judge, who sometimes is elected official. You have your sheriff, who is an elected official. And you have these type of elections that have some of the lowest voter turnout ever, especially from us. And these are the people that are going to be in charge of some of the decisions that are made that affect us at a local level. So if we don't get involved and start putting our political uh, minds together and our dollars together to support candidates, now every candidate, there might not be a black candidate in every, you know, every situation. However, we do have some people that would be allies that would be good to know what they think when they get uh, when they're in the position, we can look at what their track record was on how they dealt with black people in the courtroom. We can look at different things like that and gather this information. And this is the kind of information that we need to be able to make an informed decision on who is going to be representing us in court and who is going to be, uh, you know, representing us in the streets. Because mm-hmm. if we're complaining about what's going on with the police department, what do we do? Mm-hmm. If we're complaining about that, which we are complaining about that, and I'm not saying that it's going to change everything overnight, but damn, this would be a good place to go and start talking about this and get out there and say, okay, so who's doing what? And start peeling back the layers of the onion and find out what these people's agenda really is. You know, are these the good old boys that have always been, you know, and, and the, the, the DA's real buddy, buddy with the judge and you watching us get taken to jail, you know, more than we should, because this is what's been going on. Yeah. So if we want to see change, we have to do these three things. We gotta, we gotta invest in our own, right? We gotta, we gotta take care of our own. So that means we gotta do business with each other. Then we have to make sure that the money that we are investing is not working against us in the companies that we invest in continuing the pro oppression. So it's systemic, right? And and sometimes we're aiding the systemic racism that's affecting us and not even knowing it. And the third thing is making sure that we get the right people in the right positions to represent us and our interest. Yeah. They might not be black. That's fine. They don't have to be black. No. Might not be black, but I want to know what type of person they are. 
you know, what, what are they doing? How have they done stuff in the past mm-hmm. and dig in on those things? Because mm-hmm. when you're, when you're, when your kids are sitting in the courtroom and you're wondering what's going on and how come nothing is being changed and you didn't go vote, let's talk about it. You know, like, that, cause I think that's, that is one of the things that, and, 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 and we are horrible about that. I'm not voting. My vote don't mean anything. <sighs> Locally, it does. Yes. It means a lot more than, yeah, get out and vote. And at your local elections, your local elections, know which people are affecting your community, like have the direct impact over your community. Yes. And that is where you have the most impact. So I love that you brought that up. And um, thank you for summarizing those three points oh, so eloquently. <laughs> no, no, no. That was awesome. So eloquently. And um, let's talk about the series that you did on your podcast oh, yeah. um, called We Need to Talk, because I'm going to provide links directly to those episodes. And this is something if you want a lot more background about what's going on and how we as a community have been dealing with a lot of these things, <laughs> the local current situations um, out here in our media and just how they've affected us. <laughs> Yeah. historically and how you know this ain't new to us you know um so let's talk about your uh we need to talk series yeah so the we need to talk series started uh two mondays ago uh and the idea happened because we were we needed to talk <laughs> and and uh, i was talking to one of my buddies uh desarte yarnway we were talking on the phone and i was like we need to do something the stuff that with george floyd happened Everybody was asking questions. We were mad, frustrated, didn't feel like anybody was listening to us. And so here comes the We Need to Talk series. And so the first episode was about, uh, it's three, you know, four black men, black men in America. Let's get the perspective. Let's talk about the things that we, the stuff you don't get to say normally in the room with the people that need to hear it. Uh, We just went ahead and said it. We kept it raw. We kept it uncut. A little bit of, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit of language on there, but we, you know, it was raw emotion. So we talked about that. Uh, the second one was we had one with the sisters on because they needed to speak too. They needed to hear. We need to talk. They needed to talk. So we got on and we did that, and they, they killed it. They got out. They talked about everything from working in the financial services industry to uh, the way they wear their hair, the comments that they got, the 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 blatant racism where, you know, someone was calling one of them, uh, you know, calling them a nigger to their face. And then the others, the, 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 the micro aggressions that come towards you, like, oh, your hair looks better straight. Well, what do you mean? You know, so the girls, the, the, the sisters went in on that one. Uh, we went in on ours and it was all basically, you know, about our experiences being pulled over. Like, you know, people like white people needed to hear what the experience was like when you're black and, you know, you have to talk about how you interact with police. Like, that's a, that's a thing. They're like, you guys have, I was like, that's a thing. Like every, every, I don't know if there's a person, a black person I know that haven't had that talk. Like, okay, the police are, you know, I seen a video the other day of a little boy playing in his front yard. The police drove by and he hid behind the car. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. If, if that don't sum up what our relationship with police is like, I don't know what will. And so we talked about that. And then I had one with the allies. Uh, allies are people that are going to help us that are black because we can't do it on our, on our own. So we had some allies on there and that episode will be dropping on Monday. Uh, but I loved it. We've been getting a great deal, a great amount of feedback about what's going on. And it's opened up some other opportunities for some of the other uh, brothers and sisters that were on the, the, the podcast. And that's what it's about, right? We talk about working with each other, helping each other. So I had, you know, we had eight, seven black people, all financial advisors, and we put them on, put them on the platform so that they can talk. I hope they get a business from it. I hope they get speaking opportunities. I hope they get everything for it. It's not, I can't do everything and nor do I want to try to do everything. So we spread the wealth and make sure that we're taking care of our own. Because once again, help ain't coming. Exactly. We got to help ourselves. So yeah, I think this is a great way, uh, a great place to start affecting change in our communities. And um, I thank you so much, Emlyn, for what you do for our community, because I know you're a connector, but you also provide stellar services. And so talk about the services that you provide in your wealth management company. 
Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, what I do is we work with people in two, uh, two different ways. Either uh, we're going to do some financial planning or we do investment management. Now on the financial planning, we have three levels of service. We have bronze, gold, or I'm sorry, bronze, silver, and gold. On the bronze package, we'll do a, you know, just a financial plan for you. And when I say just a financial plan, that means it's 12 months of engagement. So we don't give you, you know, a, a plan and say, pat you on the butt and say, good luck, figure out all that stuff that we put together for you. We work with you uh, for 12 months to make sure that we accomplish all the goals. On the silver package, we're going to work with you on your financial planning and we do tax planning and tax preparation as well. I only do that for my clients. Uh, so we do prepare taxes for our clients on the silver packet. So you're going to get the financial plan. We work together for 12 months. We make sure that we're optimizing all of your uh, taxable um, occurrence, like everything that, you know, we make sure we get optimal tax situations for our clients prior to them filing their taxes. So that's what tax planning is. So we don't, there's no surprises. By the time December 31st gets here, you know what you owe or what you're going to get back. There's no surprises. We don't need to wait for a W-2 or any of that. Um, and then the, the, the last level of service is our gold level of service where we do the financial planning, tax planning, tax prep, and we do estate plans. So we do estate planning here at our firm uh, because it is very important for families of color to make sure that they have those things taken care of and the documents that are in the estate. So we're going to have an advanced health care directive. We'll have the power of attorney. We will have a will. We'll have, you know, if you own a property, we will make sure that all those homes are in title, correct titled in the trust. So we take care of everything from beginning to end. That's our three packages and, and, and uh, absolutely love it. All of those are 12 month engagements. Uh, so you can, you know, get frequent communication and uh, we do every, you know, we review your benefits from work, everything in that. So we go through uh, everything. And the reason why I did all this is because when we started, um, the when I was working at a, another brokerage firm, uh, every time I would help someone, they would still have questions about their personal finances. Like, so they come in, they want to get some insurance. I sell them an insurance policy. And then now they want to ask about the 401k. Okay. So I got to help them with the 401k and the company was only paying me to sell insurance. So I was not being able to have the impact in people's lives that I thought I could. And so I changed and left the firm after, you know, after being in, in at a large firm for, my entire career. So I, I've been doing this for 20 years now and my entire career, I was working at larger firms and not serving people the way that I felt that they needed to be served with the minimums that you have people talking about, um, you know, where investors will only work with you if you have so much money. And I just wanted to make sure that I was able to serve minority families. And that's what I primarily work with minority families, making, bringing clarity, harmony, and focus to their finances. So love it. So where they, where can they find you? <laughs> oh, you Gen next wealth, uh, dot com. You can always get me there. That's my website. You can go to the minority money podcast. Um, that's on all podcast platforms. You can hear what I'm talking about there. And I highly recommend people before you ever even call me, just listen to what I got to say on the podcast. If you don't like me there, then you know, you, you'll know if you like me just from listening to that. That's right. So that's, that's where I'm at. I'm active on all social media, as you know, that it's, uh, you know, Twitter's where I'm at a lot, uh, here recently. Uh, but it's E miles Mattingly on Twitter, E miles Mattingly on Instagram. And, uh, that's M I L E S Mattingly M A T T I N G L Y. Um, and that, that's, that's where I'm at. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Emlyn, for joining me. This has been, a uh, special honor and a treat and I always love our conversations because we can talk forever about money about affecting change and just you know how we plan to impact the world so thank you again thank you. thanks for having me it was, <laughs> it was right. an honor it's honor <laughs> all right